Alright, so these are what's left with our transmission when we park. This is why we're trying to replace the filter. So these are pretty terrible. So that was from last time when we were out here. This is from this time, and you can actually see it drip. So let me get under there and see if I can see where it's coming from again. All right, so this transmission has been leaking more and more. I tried to wipe it here where I see it leaking the most, and you can see a red dot of transmission fluid there threatening to come out. Um, and so what I did was I tightened these bolts all around here and nuts just to uh, try to get it to snug up maybe and stop leaking so much and then I, I busted that one so you can see where it broke so that's actually a through bolt it goes through on the other side you can kind of see it right there um, that's the other side of it the problem is it's so long it's about six and a half to seven inches that it hits the pan on that side and on this side it hits the transmission <laughs> So there's no way to get that out without pulling the transmission. So we are contemplating pulling this transmission and resealing this little spacer. So there's the motor, there's like a three inch spacer, and then there's the housing for the transmission. I think it's leaking between the two, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna pressure wash this whole thing to try to knock all this oil and gunk out of here to try to see where it's actually leaking from. Um, try to get a little bit better view of of where the fluids are actually coming out. I think it's between the transmission and the engine, but I wanna be sure uh, because pulling the transmission is a ton of work. All right, big project on the bus today. So what? from the time we've had this bus, the entire time, it leaks a little bit. It leaks a little bit of oil. It leaks a little bit of transmission fluid. Um, in recent times, probably within the last maybe four months, it started to leak more and more out of the transmission. And so we check the oil and the transmission fluid almost every time we stop. We just check to make sure all the fluid levels are okay, make sure there isn't any water in the oil or any, any, any water in the transmission fluid or anything like that. So we're always checking the oil and the transmission fluid. Well, recently we've discovered we've got to put more and more transmission fluid in. And it started getting really bad when we stopped at Scott's, um, the bus grease monkey. It left quite a big puddle on the ground, bigger than it normally does. And so I was like, oh no. And thinking back, hindsight being 2020, we should have addressed it then because he knows what he's doing and he knows how to pull them apart and all that. Um, but we'd always had little leaks and so I thought, oh, we'll just, you know, it's just a small leak, we'll keep putting, but it, but it has gotten worse and worse. And so when we were at Scott's, we didn't really have time to do it then. He had other projects he had to do. We had really only stopped to visit and fix a couple minor leaks and ended up doing a lot more work. We ended up doing just a ton of stuff. So there really wasn't time, even if we probably wanted to, um, we probably could have waited, but we were on a schedule. We wanted to get home for graduations and things like that. And we have family visiting. Um, but now it's just gotten so bad that we feel like we need to address it. And so I called Scott and said, what do you think? Can I take it to a shop? And he said, I think you can do it yourself. So here we are, we're gonna attempt to do it ourselves. So I know that we've gotta remove all the, the plumbing, we've gotta drain the coolant system, we've gotta drain the transmission, we've gotta do all those things. We've got a cherry picker or an engine hoist here that we're gonna to use to pull the transmission out of there because it weighs uh, right at about 900 to 1,000 pounds. And so it's gonna take a little bit just of prepping and then we're gonna go ahead and try to do this project. We pressure wash the engine and we think it's leaking right where they join. So there's a big gasket that goes, there's a, we have a spacer, some don't, some do. I've done quite a bit of research now, but ours has a three inch gasket that pulls the transmission away from the engine just that much. And so we've got two gaskets that we've ordered, uh, one for either side and some gasket sealer stuff that will help to kind of seal everything up nice and tight. 
So we're going to try to attempt this. We're a little nervous about it, obviously, but um, we're going to go slow and just take our time and make sure we don't get hurt or make sure we don't break something. So this is the beginning of that project. That was not super successful. No, I mean, we got it off. And we may need some little pieces of hose here, that, this yep. one here. It doesn't look like it's in great shape. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess this stuff we just won't save. So we're trying to save as much coolant as we can, um, which is why we had, like when we drained it first, we put it in a clean barrels and we're trying to keep it from getting contaminated. But these hoses, as we remove them and, you know, they kind of go out under the bus. I mean, even though we pressure wash the bus, it's junk's just going to get in there. So we will probably have to replace I would imagine a few gallons of coolant, but you know, whatever we can save the better. All right, so we got about, I don't know, 14 or 15 gallons of coolant out of the pet cock over on the driver's side rear of the bus. And we're just gonna try and keep that from being contaminated over here so we can put that back in the bus. That one on the top, let's cross down and into there. Okay, the other line comes from here, down, over, and into the heat exchanger. And from the heat exchanger, we have a line that goes down, around, and up over here. Then we have another line that goes from down there, up and over to the oil filter housing. And from the oil filter housing, we have a line that goes up and around into here. So that's transmission lines. Okay, next up is draining the transmission fluid. Now this we are not going to try and salvage. We are, we just bought enough to replace it all. We're also going to replace the transmission filter. All right, now that we've drained the transmission fluid, we can start removing these lines. So, got that one off. So, spin that, so it's gonna come towards me, right? Oh no, oh no. Whoops. <laughs> Missed that one. What? Okay, hold on. Let's turn. It's like turning, it's just bending the whole hose. Yeah, but this is a, there, see? Yeah. It's a swivel. Okay, so now that those hoses are off, we also disconnected our fan here. And now that allows us to get our door completely out of the way. We contemplated just removing the door, but now seeing, you know, that we can get it completely all the way open, um, we just decided it's not worth it to take it off. Just one less thing to worry about not 
being able to get back on straight. So we're gonna just leave that because it's totally out of the way now. And now the goal is just to get as much stuff out of there and out of the way as possible. So we have a lot of just moving and removing things out of our way. All right, that heat exchanger came off with four bolts from underneath and made it a little bit of a mess, <laughs> but um, we got it out and set that aside. Okay, now let's worry about taking this filter housing off. All those washers are gonna fall out. They're probably gonna go right in that pan. All right, so we removed the airline back there and you can see we're trying to like, anytime we pull something out, we're trying to keep it covered. We're just using foil and zip ties um, just so that we don't get gunk in things until we put it back together. Um, what's next? I think we're gonna, oh, there's more. We keep kind of checking and draining a little bit more and a little bit more it seems to keep coming out, but. I think we need to uh, deal with this neutral switch. Uh, we had a friend, John Matthews, tell us that's a point that tends to leak and so that may be something we want to replace. So we're going to maybe try and call Allison and see about getting another one of those. But I think in the meantime, instead of trying to pull that out, because I think it's going to be kind of hard to get out, um, we're maybe just going to cut cut the wires and then we can re like put new connectors and stuff up in there so I think that's what's next all right so we've prepped this for about half a day we removed most of the hoses the heat exchanger down here uh, the hookup the hookup for the shifter um, the airline and We've drained the coolant and all most of the transmission fluid, so we're getting pretty close. So we've got a couple things left to do. One is remove the dipstick housing, so we're going to remove that. It's all beat up anyway, so um, <laughs> we just have to make sure it isn't beat up more. Um, and we have to remove the flange in the back that holds the universal joint. So there's about 10 bolts on that. Um, not sure how that'll go. <laughs> I think it's pretty hard to do, um, but anyway, it's getting there. So by tomorrow, we should be able to start trying to get the jack on top of it. We may also have to, we put this in, this is just a, an electrical box, and we may just move that and get it out of the way. It's just two screws, so just to have more things out of the way, but it's really easy to see the transmission now, and with the door open all the way, and we've picked all these wires up and gotten them out so that we can have a nice clear shot at coming back. So once we get it hooked up and, and jacked up, there's a cross beam across the front here that we're gonna have to remove. And this guy here also, which is supporting that into the transmission. And then we'll kind of jack it up and make sure it's all the weight is off of that. Therefore we make sure all the weight's off the bell housing and then we'll look at how we're gonna get all those bolts out. So, pretty exciting. All right, one last thing that Scott reminded us to do was to drain the bell housing um, so we don't make more of a mess. All right, so day two, and we're, well, you can see we removed that electrical outlet that we plug our engine block heaters into. And now Juan is trying to remove all the bolts where the transmission attaches to the universal joint, which attaches to the differential. And he's not feeling great today. Um, he's just really congested and stuff. So <clears throat> it's gonna be a long day, but we're trying to get this part off and then hopefully after that, we have one more little thing to remove and then we can start trying to chain up the, the transmission. All right, it's a bit of a pain to take off all the bolts, but you can reach them all. And I had to use a 5 8 on the bolt and an 11 16 on the nut. 
but I was able to get them all off and I should be able to kind of pull that out of the way so that it's free from that. So I think we've got the rear taken care of. Well, that was a fail. Um, this arm, my cousin uses this to load something in the back of his truck and the arm is so long that it just lifts the back up. <laughs> so there's no way that'll lift this transmission out of here. So I'm gonna put this one away and Michelle's on her way to go buy another one. All right, so we got one of these from Harbor Freight, it's supposed to be good for two tons. We know that the transmission weighs about 900 pounds, so it should be rated well enough for that. So you can see how much shorter the boom is. <laughs> so quite a bit shorter. So anyway, we'll give it a try, see how it goes. All right, so we're continuing on with getting this transmission out. We've gone ahead and used a big, heavy chain. So this is a big, heavy chain that we've used it's from the tractor stuff that's around here but anyways that goes up and around this whole body and then we have it going forward and around the nose and then back up in here where we have two grade 8 bolts here holding it and then we've just kind of tied the excess up here so it's just out of the way so we've put tension on it with the thing and it does it lifts the whole bus so um, we're gonna do it so it's just putting tension, and then we're gonna start removing uh, the cross member here in the front, and then we'll see how much room we have to get the bolts and stuff uh, off of the bell housing. All right, we got that front rail out. And so the last thing left is to just remove all of those bolts on the bell housing. And we keep calling, <laughs> Or texting Scott along the way, like, what do you think about this? Do we have enough room? Is this chain upright? <laughs> Please say a prayer for us. We're a little nervous. So this is kind of, this is the moment. Let's see if we can get the bolts off. And let's see if our chain holds. Here we go. We think there's 15 bolts that hold it on and we've been labeling them all in a weird way. Never mind that, we'll redo that. It <laughs> makes sense to us. <laughs> but we've got the last one, which is the one on the very top at the 12 o'clock position. Um, so hopefully after that, we should be able to remove it. There's already tension on this. It should be close to coming out. So here we go. around Last bolt. Last bolt. So I'll put that right there. Okay. All right, that was the last bolt, so it should be free. Um, so here we go. Here it comes. Yeah, it's coming out. Okay, what can I do? You want me to get Dominic? I don't know. Scott said I'd have to kind of shimmy it out. I 
it is it is coming out you can see it separating there yeah that gasket is totally torn yep yeah like i think a bunch of it's missing This is so easy. Oh my gosh. What can. Mm. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Yikes. Do you see, babe? Like, look. Oh yeah. Where's the rest of it? It's right here. Oh, it's on side. this side? Well, so it's torn. Yeah. But we could, I mean, could we have torn that just. Yeah, getting it out have. but it looks like it was actually leaking on the other side over there you think yeah because it wasn't leaking out of here it was I leaking mean back there. it was leaking who knows all right so oh it's out gosh. Um, okay we just got to kind of get it out of the way yeah all right so the transmission is free we didn't kill ourselves thank goodness <laughs> But you can see it's completely separated now. And what I'm gonna do is just take a quick measurement of the ram, which is exactly... It's six inches to the black. To the black. Uh -huh. Yep, it's six inches exactly to the black. That way if this leaks down or something, we know approximately where it needs to be to get it back to the right height. So six inches from the bottom of this to the black. So anyway, we're going to try to get out of here as safely as we can and so we can start cleaning all that up, probably cover it with something tonight and then continue this tomorrow. A pretty good job of balancing it. Past, yep. past so the bumper. When we put it in, we have to remember that we have to go like that then in. Yes, okay. So we've spent the morning working on hardware. So we've kind of checked all of it. There's some that were still in pretty good condition that just needed to be cleaned really well. And some that were not in good shape or bent. Um, some that we felt like could be a little bit longer. They weren't seating all the way in. Um, and so we spent the morning cleaning and chasing down new hardware and all of that. And now we are starting the process of getting ready to, re to install the new gasket. So first thing we have to do is take off this spacer that goes between the engine and the transmission. So there's a couple bolts and then um, some Allen bolts as well. Do you want like a T-handled one? No? No? Okay. <laughs> oh, look at that. Is there supposed to be a gasket in there? Is there one on the back side that I can't see? Yep. There's a gasket on there? Yeah, and this is stuffed full of something. What? What is that? I don't know. Okay. 
way. So you really think that this, it's more this gasket that was the problem? Yep. Okay. So you think, you think this, this area on the right hand side is probably the worst problem, yes? Right here, all along here. Can you look at the gasket where that is over there? Is it like torn or? No, but it's all wet. Yeah. It doesn't look torn. Is that also where those bolts weren't really tight? Yep. That we couldn't get to? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, so we've taken off the spacer and we've cleaned off both sides of the spacer and as well as um, this edge of the engine, um, just any extra sealant or anything like that that was on there, we cleaned off. And now we're just running these, um, these bolt, bolt holes with a tap just to make sure they're cleaned out because the bolts were a little, um, just they were being a little difficult coming out. I'm sure they're just grimy and oily and gunky in there. So we're just kind of cleaning them out with our tap and making sure they're ready for the bolts to go in a little more nicely this time. All right, we're getting ready. So we're using Permatex. I'm gonna show the bottle. This is what Scott told us to use. It's like a 90 right minute stuff. right stuff Permatex. Mainly as a like a way to kind of glue the gasket that we have from Luke um, onto here so it doesn't, you know, shift and wiggle. So just doing a thin layer. I'm gonna go all the way around. Kind of start over here. Yeah, that's what we did. You last ready? Time. Yep. Is that matching up pretty good? <laughs> those in a little bit too.
like they're coming through. Is that all of them? Where's the rest of them? So it said to just do these finger tight for the first hour. So don't go crazy on them. So how's that? I don't know. I'm just. <clears throat> going in a lot. A lot it nicer. doesn't feel as nasty as it did. Okay. All right. So this morning we're getting a little bit of a late start. It's our daughter's birthday today. So we celebrated with her and we've gotten a little bit of a cold or COVID or whatever's going around. So we're trying to stay away from everybody and um, fix our transmission. So one of the issues we found was on one of these holes, when we pulled out the bolt, we noticed that there was, it almost looked like threads embedded kind of in the grooves of the actual bolt. And so I took a picture of it and I, I asked Scott, um, the bus grease monkey, hey, what is this? Did like a helicoil come out or something? <laughs> and he said, oh no. He goes, that's your threads coming out. That needs to be helicoil. And so he said, on these transmissions, um, very often they'll already all be helicoiled. And then upon inspecting it, um, four, or I'm sorry, two out of the four holes do have helicoils already in them. So um, today we're gonna helicoil the one that had the thread sticking out of it. And so we got this tool, it's the power coil. This is just, we've had to buy some bolts because I think what happened here is this bolt was not long enough and so it only grabbed a few of the threads and it was too much and it and they let go. So a couple of these and this one specifically, uh, when I went to undo them in the back were extremely loose. I mean literally I could hand remove them and so that's probably why um, it wasn't deep enough and it just barely caught a few of the threads and, and just ripped those out. So we're going to repair that today with this. Um, hopefully this will be pretty easy. And um, then we'll get ready to put this guy back in. So we can put two in, it says? Yeah, but I don't think we should. You don't? No, honestly, I think one is gonna be just fine. It's gonna have a ton <clears throat> of threads on it. I know, but it's not gonna go in all the way then. I know, but it'll grab, right? Okay, I, I mean... just, I'm afraid that we won't be able to fit two because... Okay. Because, first of all, because this doesn't cut all the way oh. to the end. Okay. So I'm a little bit Yeah, afraid. that's fine. I mean, I don't know. He said you can stack them. I know. And if we but... had more room, that might be a good option. So on this, it said... And you tap it. Yeah, but it said make sure it goes down like two threads <clears throat> in or something. Like that. There it is. That was it? Knocked it off. Oh. So you can see it in there. Can you look in there? See the broken tine? 
I mean, not really. I can't see anything see on the video. Oh, there. Came flying out. Okay. All right, time to put on the next gasket. So we're gonna work on getting the Permatex on, gasket on, more Permatex, and then we can try and refit the transmission on. Okay. <clears throat> try to jack up the nose, okay? just a little bit. Yes. So it's in. We just gotta fine tune it just a tiny bit. Okay. Alright, I'm 
the pump. You ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna try and slide the bolt in. Not yet. Oh, I can see it twisting. Yeah. Do you wanna try and loosen the bolt? I can see that it's not ready yet. Is that? It's close. I think it needs a little bit more. What do you think? I can't really see the full edge from this position. Okay, look into these. This is the six. Uh -huh. Is that the next one? Uh -huh. like this one? <clears throat> Close. Okay. So remember, we're only supposed to do it, you know, yeah, right. partially tight for the first hour. So it's back in. Uh, it was a little bit of finagling to get it in there. We used a just a bottle jack on the bottom with a two by six to sort of because when we got it in initially, and it was the holes were off by about about two degrees. Would you say maybe about two degrees? And so we put a bottle nose or we put a bottle jack underneath the nose part of it and just so that it turned clockwise. So it was about two degrees and we got the holes lined up and then they literally slid in by hand. So um, they all went in really smoothly and really well. So we're thankful for that. And we've cinched them all up, got them all replaced. Um, we did follow the procedure on the right stuff, a thing which said, let it sit for 60 minutes just at hand tight. And then after that, after the 60, we went and ate lunch. And then after the 60 minutes, we came back through and just torqued everything down. And so it's nice and tight now, so it should be secure, but we're not gonna release it off the jack until we put the support member under here, um, put this support back up, and then I'll go through and connect it to the drive shaft and then just put everything on in the reverse order that we took it off. So um, we're about 90% done, I guess. So it's gone pretty well. I, I was really nervous about this. Michelle and I were both super nervous that we could get it off at all and then that we could align it to get it back in. But um, we were just, um, just real careful and just went slow. So it's taken us about four days to do all this. All right. Everything is put back. Hoses are on. We put a new filter on. Everything is reconnected, and now we're putting all new transmission fluid in about, oh, I don't know, 300 or so, $350 worth of new transmission fluid. So let's pray that this worked and that we don't have a big giant leak.
All right, we're putting the fluid back in. We've filled the transmission with the fluid and now we're filling up the uh, radiator, the cooling system. So at Scott's, we used a hand pump from Harbor Freight and that worked okay except my arm got really sore. <laughs> and we saw that thing at Harbor Freight and it was nine bucks. And so for two more dollars, for $11, we got this thing and it, um, you just turn the switch on and it pumps. So it does five gallons in about, I don't know, maybe three minutes. So it's pretty fast. Um, not sure I would recommend it. It leaks quite a bit, but it's getting the fluid in there. So I'm gonna call it a win. So we just started the, I don't know if it'll take the full five gallons. We may have to start it. Well, we've already put in like 10 gallons, yeah, we, right? Yeah, we've already put in most of it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not sure it'll take all this. Nope, it's done. All right, we are going to start the bus and try and get some of this fluid moving in here. It's 105 degrees out right now, so... No engine block heaters necessary. Oh, okay, we're gonna do a rear start. Okay, we're gonna add some more transmission fluid now that we kind of warmed everything up. It's gonna take more. All right, so we're finished. The transmission is back in. It's installed. Everything works. We tested it yesterday. We drove and got water. So, um, we just want to say a huge thank you to Scott, the bus grease monkey. He's, I, we've called and we've talked and he talked me into doing it basically. And um, we've learned a ton just from pulling it out and you know, did way more than we thought we could do. So um, it is all sealed up. Unfortunately, there still is a few leaks. So it's not perfect, but it's like 95% better than it was. So I'm still gonna call it a win. I also want to thank John Matthews. If you don't follow him on YouTube, he has a ton of bus content, which is awesome. I text him almost as much as I text Scott, and, you know, he's just a great guy and always willing to give advice, and he worked, he works on his own, and he worked with when they were Greyhounds and all that, so he has a ton of experience. Also, Scott Cook in, um, in Oregon. We talked back and forth a couple of times. He's having some transmission troubleshooting that he's doing. So um, I called him to kind of pick his brain and he was very gracious with his time and he's always been a great friend. So um, yeah, someone to talk buses with. And anyway, it's in, it's installed. We were like, we couldn't believe it when we got it in. It was like hitting the lottery. So anyway, <laughs> um, it's, we're gonna call it done. It is dripping, like I said, just a little bit, just a, one or two drops when we stop. So that's 100% better than the giant mess it used to leave out here. So anyway, we're gonna call this project done.